Hello my friends, I'm Duchess and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to give you guys my 5 tips on how to get good composition within each panel and how to balance your panels. Let's get started. Disclaimer, I am not a professional artist or webtoon creator, but these are my tips and my advice on panel composition as someone who is not entirely new at creating webtoons. Thank you so much to Chariots AX again for another great video request. I probably could not come up with this video on my own, so I really appreciate it. All right, so tip number one is spacing. Space between your panels affects the way that readers read. For example, an action scene from a webtoon will have the panels spaced closer together. This makes the drawings move more quickly and you can see a lot more happening within a shorter amount of time. You don't have to scroll much to see all the action and that can make your readers really feel the energy from your drawing. Like I've said before in another video, the flow of motion. Now, if it's a more relaxed scene, the panels will be placed further apart, which will make the readers read slower. This is especially important because you want to have good pacing in your story and know how to utilize it as best as you can. For my webtoon making process, I always do my paneling first. Let's say I have my script and I'm working on the next episode. The first thing I do is sketch out the location of each panel, which is what I call paneling. I don't think it's an actual word, but that's what I call it and it makes sense to me, so yeah. Um, this takes me about one hour in total because I'm basically just drawing boxes. It's nothing complicated, just figuring out where I should place the panel so that the pacing is good, I guess. This is when I pay most attention to the spacing of my panels because after that I, I, you know, I use my panel stamps and then that's it for the panels. Tip number two is have background panels. This has to do with the composition within the panels. I know some of you guys are probably not too excited about this tip and honestly, I don't like it either. Some of you might know how much I dislike drawing backgrounds because I'm not very good at it and it's just not that fun, but it's good for composition. The reason for this is because it really sets the mood for your storytelling. If you never have any panels with just a background drawn, then it's just people or animals or, you know, your characters that you that the readers see all the time. It doesn't really show the readers where your characters are and it's hard for them to imagine what's going on. If you add a few background drawings here and there, it makes the readers more invested in the story and they know what's happening. They can visualize your characters in a certain area because you drew it for them, you know? If the background you draw is a dark and creepy place, then it's going to give the readers a much different vibe compared to having no background drawn at all. Like if you didn't include it at all, they would just have to come up with an idea of what it might look like. You can make the character say, oh, it's so dark and scary, but it's much more effective to have a background drawing that will show the readers just how dark and scary it is. That's the power of comics and that is the power of drawing. Tip number three is have variety. Variety meaning changing up what you draw in your panels. For example, if you have a panel here where your character is talking and only their head is showing, in the next panel, maybe draw your character from the side with their hands out as they're talking. This creates variety and makes your panels look better and more appealing. You're not always seeing the same person in the exact same way. You don't want a bunch of talking heads in your webtoon. I do this sometimes, but I try not to. I feel like it's something you can easily forget, so I would just recommend really thinking about this when you're sketching and doing the paneling because you can't really change much about the composition after you do the line art and the coloring because it's, um, it's a lot of work. Changing the perspective, the view, and the way that the character is positioned can make your panels have more variety. So those are some things that you could do. Tip number four is center your work. I would also recommend that you guys always center your drawings in a panel. That also really helps with composition unless you have a specific goal in mind. For most of your drawings, it's better to have it take up most of the space within the panel or at least be centered because it's not very attractive to have all of this negative space. Remember, everything else on your canvas is blank and empty besides the panels where your drawings are. So you don't want your drawings to have a bunch of empty space. 
it's unappetizing. <laughs> like when you buy a bag of chips at the store only to open it and see that the chips don't even fill up the bag halfway. It's mainly air and it's a ripoff and it's pretty much the same for our webtoon. There might be some times where you don't necessarily need to center your work. Like if you're doing a really expressive drawing for your webtoon and you have like a specific goal in mind and you want to create a specific effect like maybe display someone's loneliness by leaving all of this empty space in a panel then yeah you can do that you know there's it depends on what you're doing but I would say generally to you know it's better to center your work so that it looks full and the composition just looks nicer last but not least tip number five color to have good composition also requires having colors that look good together. I kind of mentioned this before in a previous video about making backgrounds that match with the characters. If the colors clash, then the composition doesn't really matter all that much. I personally think that the colors that you use are more important than centering your work because at least your art looks pleasing to the eyes of the readers. What I started doing is using the color wheel. I'm pretty sure that most drawing programs have a color wheel so I would recommend that you guys check that out if you guys haven't before. It has really increased the quality of my webtoon. If I didn't use it, my characters would look like zombies and my webtoon would look like I couldn't decide if I wanted it to be fully colored or like a black and white shoujo manga. Did I say that right? I have read webtoons that do only have one main color that they use or one specific saturation which makes the art look very stylized and cute. If you have that type of art style or you like that aesthetic, then I say go for it because those webtoons are super cute and there are a lot of people who do like that art style. I read those styles all the time and well, basically any style really. But for me, I don't have that kind of style. So I like contrasting colors and colors that look well together, not clashing, but contrasting. All right, I'm just gonna show you guys what the color wheel is and like how to access it on Procreate. Let's go to the colors. Click Harmony and you can see all the colors here. If I press this word up here, it gives me these options. I use these to select my colors for my webtoon and it's really helpful. I'm not going to go into detail about the color wheel and stuff, but if you guys uh, would be interested in knowing how to use that, then I can probably make a video for that. Just let me know in the comments. To sum it up, spacing between panels, having backgrounds, variety, centering your art, and having attractive colors will help you have good composition and balance within your panels. I really hope that this helps you guys and that this answers part of your question. Next week, I'm going to focus more on speech bubble composition, so yeah. That is all I have for you guys this week. If you guys enjoyed this week's video or learned something new, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get notified. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next week.